So many human rights have been stripped away by this conservative U.S. Supreme Court. I'm talking abortion, diversity in college admissions, LGBTQ plus rights, the list goes on. And right now there are six conservative judges, all appointed by Republican presidents, and three liberal-leaning judges. Two of them were appointed by former President Barack Obama. The third was Justice Ketanji Brown Jackson, who was appointed by President Biden last year. This 6-3 to three court makes the court more conservative and, some would say, limits the voice and the power of progressive voters. This conservative court is the enduring legacy of former President Donald Trump. He helped shape this ultra-conservative bench with three appointments during his term. And now, a new Showtime docuseries takes a look at how we got here. The only thing that has changed is the membership of the court. We have rolled back the clock to 1965. This term is the court checking off the conservative to-do list. Abortion, check. Administrative state, check. Religious freedom, check. That's just a snippet of deadlocked, how America shaped the Supreme Court, and it premieres next Friday on Showtime. You do not want to miss this. Joining me now is the Emmy Award-winning director behind the project, Dawn Porter. My sister, thank you so much for joining me. Welcome to The Griot. I'm so happy to be here. Thank you so much for having me. Why did you think this series was important to make, uh, particularly at this moment in history? You know, uh, so I'm a lawyer by training. Before I made films, I uh, practiced law. Um, and I grew up like so many of us, you know, for black folks, the Supreme Court has been the guarantor of our rights. Uh, we have Brown v. Board of Education. We have the right to an attorney. We have the right to have your rights read to you. We have Roe v. Wade. Um, and so uh, as I kind of watched with such concern about the direction of the court, I thought it would be uh, really important for us all to understand uh, as Americans, as a community, as black people, how did we get here? How did we get to the place where we have this 6-3, very conservative majority? Um, some have said it's not just a conservative court, it is a radical court. It is a radical conservative court. And what does that mean for black and brown people? And it's important that you frame the question that way so that it doesn't seem as if this is just uh, accidental or that this was just a blip or an unfortunate struck of, stroke of electoral luck where Donald Trump just happened to be president when a whole bunch of justices just happened to sit down. This is a long-term project, strategy, plan, whatever you want to call it, to get us here, no? This is that's exactly right. I mean, if you look back in history, and that's what we do over the four hours of this series, Richard Nixon had four appointments to the Supreme Court. Ronald Reagan had four appointments to the Supreme Court. And as you discussed in the introduction, Donald Trump had three. And so this is a court that has long been tilting towards the right. For a very long time, it was a center right with some moderates, with some more conservative people voting occasionally with the liberals. And now we are far beyond that. We have a very clear 6-3 conservative majority. Um, the majority is so conservative that even our conservative chief justice now is watching with concern as the court loses respect of the American people. And he sometimes now is voting with the more liberal justices. But that doesn't overcome the fact that we have this court that seems hell-bent on reversing the progress of the past. That is a scary thing. Now, you had to get people to actually share their honest thoughts about the high court makeup. You had to get people to tell the truth. How, ch how challenging was that? It's really challenging. Um, the court is notoriously a secretive body. Um, there's reasons for that. The ostensible reason is that the court doesn't want to be influenced by public opinion. And yet, as we see it, and it feels like an almost daily basis, Clarence Thomas has no problem socializing with conservative uh, donors and uh, taking gifts um, and, and actual cash from these conservative folks. So uh, we wrote to all of the justices, um, and they all declined our, our uh, ability to be interviewed. And so what we did instead is we went to some of the foremost legal experts um, in the country. And that's both conservative and liberal people. So this is not a partisan documentary. I don't want to just be preaching to the choir. Every single person we spoke to is concerned about the direction of the court, but they're not just concerned about the decisions. They're concerned about how the cases are even getting to the court, how um, the, the decisions are being made. And that's something I really want people to focus on, because that is actually the under, underpinning, undergirding of our democracy, is that we have a fair and free and conflict-free judiciary. 
And that is not what we're seeing with the Supreme Court. Wow. Have we lost hope in the courts? You know, have Americans decided that this is not a, a body worth respecting? You talked about the long, deep history of black people appealing to the court uh, for rights to adjudicate disputes, etc. Have not just black folk, but all people just said, you know what, the court ain't the place for justice anymore. Um, you know, I think that the court is rapidly losing uh, respect, but I do have, you know, one word for you or maybe three, and it's Katanji Brown Jackson, because uh, that nice. jurist, I think, is restoring a lot of, of faith in the court. And actually what we've seen is in her short time on the bench that uh, she is writing some of the most important dissents that we have seen. Judge Justice Jackson is looking to the future, along with Justice Sotomayor. It's not an accident that these two women of color are leading the court and giving us the path for how we get back to making decisions based on the rule of law and not on some ultra-conservative uh, political agenda. Well, this is an important project. It's an important story uh, and maybe could not come at a more important moment in our history. So I'm glad for this project. I'm glad to watch it. I can't wait to see it. Uh, everybody, this, this uh, docuseries debuts on Showtime. Uh, it streams on Paramount Plus starting September 22nd. Dawn Porter, my sister, thank you for joining me. Thank you for the work.